everyone's here. Welcome, everybody. Uh, sorry about the uh, background audio at the start there. We uh, had some uh, technical difficulties, but we're cooking with gas now. So I'm Russell Mackay. I'm from Farm IQ. Today we've got Annie here. Uh, you might have seen in the press that uh, we're going to be uh, working together. So we are looking at ways how Farm IQ and Farm Focus can team up uh, to make farming data a little less of a burden. Uh, what that looks like, we're still discovering. We're doing some workshops as we speak, um, but watch this space. We're doing our homework. Uh, so the reason why, why we're having these yarns is there's a fair bit of overlap between Farm Focus and Farm IQ and not in the competitive front. Uh, so we are trying to find ways to make life a little easier um, and we thought we'll come up with a webinar with a topic where we also have a lot of overlap, and that is equity partnerships. Uh, both Farm IQ and, and Farm Focus can be used very well for uh, equity partnerships or EPs. Um, I'm going to be presenting on behalf of Farm IQ today because I've got a background in rural banking. Uh, I'm a farmer, obviously using Farm IQ, and I also use Farm Focus. And Annie is uh, obviously working for Farm Focus, but uses Farm IQ on her properties, and she's got a wealth of experience with EPs herself at the coalface. So thank you, Annie. She's going to be uh, doing the majority of the talking today. Uh, thank you for all being here. Um, so a, a brief introduction myself. We'll flick through those slides here with the with the pictures. So first up, Annie, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, thanks for that, Russell. So my name's Annie. I'm originally from Edinburgh, but I've been in New Zealand for about 15 years now. I've been at Farm Focus for around seven years, and I'm an agri and training specialist. My husband and I also farm sheep and beef in the Wairarapa, and I've been involved in a few different equity partnerships. So on the EP front, I've really enjoyed our involvement with the equity partnerships. It's, it's really been a great pleasure for us. And it's also allowed us to grow our equity. And we've enjoyed doing that on that journey with other people. And um, so I'm really pleased to be here today to talk about equity partnerships. There's a few pictures there just from, from where we're at. What about you, Russell? Lovely, lovely. Nice spot you got there, Annie. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm Russell, uh, Head of Sales and Marketing for Farm IQ. I did the classic Lincoln uh, route. Um, from a fifth generation sheep and beef farm. Uh, so if you backtrack there one slide, just to give people the lay of the land there. So you can see in the distance, the Hokanui Hills. If we go back there, uh, and just under the sun, uh, that is where Riversdale is and, and the Matara River. So we're just on the cusp of Eastern and North and South in there. And then flicking back through there, uh, those are a couple of my favourite dogs. Crew on the left, he's a cracker of a heading dog, but actually not much of a likeable dog. And then on the right is Storm. He's my hunterway, who's the complete opposite. He's um, uh, very lovable, uh, but actually pretty pretty horrible of a working dog. But I forgive him for that because he's great company. Uh, moving on, I did a stint as a fencer and a shepherd. Uh, so the photo that you'll see there is a 640DT uh, fit. Um, it had the uh, centre of gravity of an army crawling pig. Um, and you can see in the background there as well, uh, Walter Peak Station. So if we just keep flicking through the slides there, that is me uh, doing some agritourism. So I had a stint at Walter Peak there, um, doing some sheep shearing and some dog shows for some tourists. And then I've also had a crack moving on to the next slide there. Um, in Canada, I spent a couple of years, did, did a harvest, and uh, worked as a dog sled guide uh, when I was in Canada. Um, and once the picture does come up there, backtrack a little bit, that oh. dog in the back right there, uh, if that looks like a hunterway, that's because it is. A mate of mine in the town I was in was from New Zealand, and he took his hunterway Bella with her, and we gave her a crack dog sledding. And as it turns out, hunterways aren't half bad at dog sledding. She had a fair bit of pulling power on her for the, for the entire day. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I did a stint agri-banking, but um, agri-banking, although I respect the profession, it doesn't make for very exciting photos, so I don't have a photo <laughs> for, for the agri-banking side. That's awesome. Thanks, Russell. We'll move on now and just talk a little bit about Farm Focus and, and what Farm Focus is. So Farm Focus is financial management software that's been built specifically for farming businesses. 
The company started over 40 years ago and is based here in Masterton. We're really passionate about what we do here. The software allows us to manage our income and outgoings accurately and consistently, which empowers us with information. This provides clarity and control to manage our farming business and make informed decisions. The planning and reporting also allows us to set realistic goals on and off farm and track our progress when we are heading towards those goals. So for us, Farm Focus has put us in a really strong position to take advantage of opportunities and grow our farming business. Do you want to tell us a bit about Farm IQ, Russell? Yeah, sure. So Farm IQ, it's a farm management tool based off a digital map. The nuts and bolts of it all is it starts with a fantastic map. And from the map, you do the, all, all of your recording. Uh, so it takes care of all of your stock, your land, uh, your people, health and safety, and all your admin side of things. So we take care of all your performance reporting from that. So for information you put into Farm IQ, we can take that information, give you some handy uh, feedback that you can use for your farm management decisions. So Farm IQ, we, we try to bring it all into the one place. We like to think uh, of trying to be the Swiss Army knife, the one tool that can do it all. And we are also the, the main uh, farm management hub for integration. So if there's a fantastic piece of software out there that does some farm recording better than us, um, we, we're we not proud, we'll just integrate with them to, to try get all your data into the one place. We're asking you bloody recording in that app and that app and you've got information all over the show. So that's the nuts and bolts of Farm IQ. Awesome, uh, Moving on to the top. Moving on to the topic of today, uh, Annie, what is an equity partnership in the broad sense? So broadly, an equity partnership is a joint business venture. You pull together capital and different skills to own and operate a business together. Equity partnerships, they're a fantastic pathway to farm ownership. They are a great vehicle to manage the succession pro process. They're a way for people, even out with the industry, to have an investment in a farming business and share in a slice of rural New Zealand. And they're also a great way for farmers to enhance their operation by pulling those, those different um, skills together. I really love the idea of bringing together different strengths, wisdom, experience, a bit of enthusiasm and energy to build a business that's stronger together than each partner would be on their own. So everyone brings something different to the table and that partnership um, gives opportunities for growth and scale that we couldn't achieve on our own. And there's lots of different um, options, lots of different ways it can look. And um, so what can what are some op options there, Russell, of what it can look like? Yeah, well, in my time agribanking, um, I learned that there were many ways to skin a cat uh, when it comes to an EP. You'll be surprised what your options are, actually. Um, you'll be surprised what your lending power is when you look at all the different avenues for an EP. Um, the dairy industry, they've, they've got a benefit over the sheep and beef folk like myself. Uh, they've got a clear ownership, uh, a clear route to farm ownership. You can start at the bottom and, you know, get into contract milking, go lower order, 50-50 uh, share milking, et cetera, et cetera. Sheep and beef doesn't quite have that, but we still have the huge uh equity required to get into farm ownership so an ep can take on many different forms many many different forms yeah uh annie what 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 is your experience with the equity partnerships so our well, journey um, started with my husband actually so he was employed as a manager on our home farm nearly 30 years ago so quite a long time ago um when he first started, he worked on the farm for a year as manager. And that was before they kind of talked about entering into an equity partnership. That first year gave them a chance to get a feel for each other and decide if it was going to be a good fit to go into business. And so they did that after that first year. Um, James bought shares in that ownership and operating company and continued to be employed as farm manager. And over the past 30 years, we've grown that shareholding in that business. Around 10 years ago, we set up another company, purchased the stock and plant and began leasing the farm from the ownership company that we still have shares in. 
So that original business has evolved over the years to suit the needs of each party. The partnership um, is quite unusual, I think, for, for that length of time, that duration, but really has been such a great joy for everyone involved. We're so grateful for the relationships that have come out of that partnership. And it's given us a really strong platform to grow from. So the original land ownership company has gone on to have other farming investments. And then the stock and plant owning company has done the same with other leases and, and taken on other opportunities. Mm. We then um, we set up and managed another sheep and beef equity partnership, which had a five year term. At the five year mark, the equity managers there were in a position to buy our shares, which was really cool. That was the goal in that partnership for them to grow their shareholding. So that's something we're, we're really proud of. Hmm. The next equity partnership came about um, as we'd employed someone to manage our home farm. And then my, my husband's eldest son was keen to come home and we couldn't just move the manager on. He'd, he'd become part of the extended family. So we teed up somebody else to purchase a farm and then we were going to set up a new company with, in partnership with our manager, buy the stock and plant and lease the farm. That ticked the goals of farm ownership for the person that was buying the farm and then it was a great next step for, for the farm manager. Hmm. With that one, things changed super last minute and the lease company actually ended up buying the farm, which was really exciting and all was going really well. But um, to get that off the ground, we'd taken on a really high level of debt, as had that farming business. Um, so we actually made the call to sell that farm this year. In mm. some ways, that was a really, really hard decision to make. I was found it quite an emotional decision to make. But it really highlighted the value of budgeting and constantly assessing where you're at and where you're going. So we keep on top of our own budget and farm focus, as well as the, the budget for the farming businesses. Um, and we could see really early on where we were headed with interest rates and the increase in costs. Um, so we made that decision together and we made that decision early to pull the lever and sell that farm. Mm -hmm. So we're really lucky that we were in that informed position and made that decision early. It showed the importance, as I mentioned, of, of budgeting and keeping on top of it, but also um, open and honest, clear communication and being involved with good people because we mm -hmm. came out of that in, in a really good position with our other partners. And then lastly, we set up another partnership and purchased a dairy farm um, last year. So again, with the others, um, one of the equity partners is employed as the manager and my husband and I, we are in an overseeing and administration role in that business. So that's a bit mm. of a, a rundown of our experience. Whew. An ex <laughs> experience is the right word. Definitely the right word. Far out. You've been, you've been up to your neck and EPs over the last 30 years, haven't you? It certainly kept us busy. Yeah. And I'll just, I thought I'd just add one thing in there, Annie. You said you were lucky. You made, you made a tough call to sell. Um, and you said you were lucky that you know, you've done your budgeting and, you know, you used obviously Farm Focus and Farm IQ to come to that decision, which is great. Um, there wasn't any luck involved in that. And the other thing that um, you can't measure is that you um, you swallowed any pride you guys had, obviously. Like you, you saw the numbers in front of you, had all the information and, you know, you weren't too, pro you weren't too proud to, to carry on and, and keep working yourself into a bottomless pit. Yeah, so no, absolutely. Was, that can be harder to do than uh, take going forward. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think those decisions, if you don't know where you're at or, you know, it's all a bit of an unknown, they're really hard to make. But yeah. I say once you've um, loaded up all the information and, and given yourself that power to know where you're at, it's, it's, it actually takes the trickiness away from the decision. It was a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you obviously had a bit of practice starting these EPs. So yeah. what would, from your experience, what would be your advice to someone looking to enter an, into an EP partnership? What do they need to look out for? Yeah, so getting into an equity partnership, the, the first thing I'd say is set goals. I really believe in the, the power of setting goals and putting a time frame around them and action points. What are you going to do to get there? You've got to write them down. You've got to talk about them. But most importantly, I think you really have to believe them. You have to put out in the universe that that's where you're headed. That's what you're going to um, what you're going to do. So, yeah, I really um, rate setting goals and making them happen. 
with getting into an equity partnership, the next thing I would say is take any opportunity to grow your skills and experience. The more experience you've got in the industry, the more tools you've got in your toolbox, the stronger your position you'll be in to get started. Next on there, I've got reputation. I think it's really important to build your reputation as a person and also build your reputation in the business and in the industry. It's really important, I think, especially in the farming world, someone will always know someone who knows you. And if your name comes up, somebody's always going to pick up the phone and, and find out what they need to know about you. So our reputation that we've built, um, I think, gave people confidence in us to, um, to go on that journey with us. And also that um, proven history of budgeting, communicating and delivering gave the bank confidence in us too. Um, I've got build equity on there, which um, isn't always you know, that straightforward, but if there's any opportunities to build equity, it's great to take them. Um, I know people that have maybe bought that house in town and, um, mm -hmm. and sold that as an investment. There might be an opportunity to lease a farm. Um, with my husband, he went shearing um, for, for a number of years to build that equity, to, to have that to get started. So any opportunities that come and present themselves, make the most of it. But I think it's also good to know with that, um, that we've found there are other options for security. So when going into business, it's not just dollars in the bank. There are um, options maybe with, for example, the company acting as a guarantor for that loan in which you could not out with your bank manager. Um, put the word out, talk to people. The more people you talk to, the better. If you're looking to get started in an equity partnership, talk to farmers, real estate agents, accountants, consultants, bank managers. If you put the word out there about who you are and where you're headed, your re your reputation will precede you and your name will come up. Those conversations, you know, when there's opportunities arise and people say, oh, who's out there? Who, who's looking to get into something like this? Your, your name will pop up. We found um, bank managers invaluable in pulling together the equity partnerships we've been involved in. Um, they seem to know who's out there with a bit of money or who's out there looking to, to get involved. And they actually seem really excited to be on that journey. I think they get quite a kick of being part of putting that all together. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you don't know many people, if you don't have a lot of contacts, I think it's not a silly idea to jump on some banking websites, look up some consultants, give them a call, introduce yourself, whether you're um, looking for the investment or, or looking for that management role um, and just introduce yourself, let them know who you are. Um, and lastly, on that list, I've got surround yourself with good people. I don't think our friends and family and our farming peers realise um, how valuable and important they are to us. Um, having that positive network of people around us that support us, amuse us in the hard times, inspire mm -hmm. us, but also make you think outside the box and challenge your way of thinking. That's really valuable. Mm -hmm. Anything to add, Russell? Anything else you can think of that would be good advice for getting started? Yeah, just, just the one thing that resonated with me is you're talking about yarning to your bank managers, your accountants, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, don't underestimate how much your bank manager or relationship manager or accountant wants to be involved. Um, contrary to belief, accountants are more than just bean counters. Um, and your bank manager or relationship manager, um, their job isn't uh, approving loans is a very minimal part of their job. Getting involved in this stuff, this is where they make their salary. So get involved with them. And if your if your bank manager, if you you know, in all honesty, if they if you don't think they support you, you know, go and make those phone calls. Maybe find someone who does support you. Um, but you'll be surprised how an enthusiastic a rural professional will be to help you out and gain some equity, for sure. Yeah, absolutely agree. Yeah. So just moving on, you've um, we've gone through the EP process um, and you've, you've got your tools to help you out along the way. How have you used Farm IQ to help out on your EP journey? I wonder, Russell, shall we just first of all talk about um, what's involved in getting that new business venture off the ground? Because there, there's a bit of work goes in behind the scenes to get yeah, started. Sure. So shall sure, I run sure. through that first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So getting an EP off the ground. There's actually quite a lot of work involved, generally more than you'd expect. And where you start off differs kind of depending on the, the situation. 
And um, so, yeah, that starting point changes depending on, on where you're at. So for us with the home farm, um, James originally bought into an existing business that already owned the farm. Um, the next equity partnership we were involved in was all about the people, the equity managers there were really good friends of ours. So it was all about them. It took a few goals to secure a property for that deal. Um, and, and then we built from there. So next, again, the people were the starting point and the business grew around them. And then with the dairy business, it was actually the property that caught our eye when it hit the market. And we were really interested in that farm. So then we went about and found the people and built from there. So um, regardless of the order that that all comes about, for us, the equity manager is the key. That person that's involved in the business, but also running the day-to-day -day farming operation, first and foremost, has to be competent. They've got to be really good at what they do. They've got to be motivated. They've got to be honest. They've got to work hard. And they've got to be good with people to be in a partnership. We then um, look at the other investors, pulling together those other people. All the people that are involved in the business, they've got to be people that we want to work with and we enjoy um, so there needs to be some fun. It's got to be a good fit. And of course, they've got to fit in well with the business side of things as well. And then the mm. other bit, of course, the other key is the property. Um, and so if it's a new farming venture, you've got to find, find the farm. So that can all change. But once you've got those pieces, once you've got those pieces of the puzzle, you need to sit down and do your plan. You need to get a really robust budget. You've got to do that to um, present to the other partners to get their buy-in. And you've also got to get that in front of the bank to get them to sign it off. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to mention there, we've got a really great product at Farm Focus called Focus Advantage. So what this deal is, it allows you to um, sign up and get a Farm Focus subscription to build your plan. So a nice empty subscription to build your budgets, to present to the bank and potential advisors. And there's no charge for having that database until transactions start going through. So you can do all your work in there. And if the deal doesn't come off, there's no charge. You simply cancel. And then when you find the next opportunity, you get a fresh one and start again. But if mm -hmm. the deal does come off, then it kicks in at, at once you start um, running your business through it. So it's good to know that that's available. So talking about more about that budget, in terms of the budget for a new equity partnership, we always um, try and have a really low level of debt and be conservatively geared. I think that's important in a new business. And being um, conservatively geared also means that if one partner ever wanted their money out, the um, company could take on the debt of that share and business can carry on because everyone's situation changes. Um, so just having that um, safeguard that the, the company could take on a bit more debt if it had to is, is important to carry on. So from there, once we've got everyone um, looking at all the, the plans and the budgets, we need to get a firm commitment from the partners. So there needs to be some sort of heads of agreement to commit everybody. And then you need to get the go ahead from the bank. Mm. Um, and then it's time to put your tender in or, or um, have, a, have a punt and try and secure the farm. And hopefully you're successful in that. There is a lot of work that goes in to get to that point. It's not always quick and it's important not to be disheartened if the first option doesn't come off. There is a saying, what's for you won't go by you, which I really like. When I said this to my husband the other day, he looked at me a bit confused. So I actually looked it up and it's an old Scottish proverb, actually, which I quite liked. What's for you won't go by you. So what's meant for you won't pass you by. And I quite like that way of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, so as I mentioned, there's a lot of work goes in behind the scenes. And for each deal that comes off, there's plenty of others that don't fly. But I like to think that that's just all really good experience and good learning. So once you are kind of on the right track and, and things are all lining up, you need to make sure you've got a really good accountant and a really good lawyer. They help with all the legalities and make sure that's all tidy. Do you need a new company? How's the business structure going to look? If the farm's maybe going to be leased from a trust? Um, that really robust shareholder agreement has to cover all your worst case scenarios. It can feel like a bit of a dark cloud 
an otherwise really exciting time. But it's important to prepare for anything and set those really clear expectations around things like time frame, employment terms, dividend expectations. How involved are the partners going to be? What are their responsibilities? How are decisions made? And also that clear exit strategy if anyone did need out. Mm -hmm. So from there, you build a business plan and set your goals. The business plan um, needs to set out expectations, what communication to expect, how often are we going to get together, when are we going to visit the farm, and what does everyone want from, from the partnership? And this will be evolving. And then lastly on there, getting off the ground, um, there's that period of getting settled in, learning and adjusting to each other. You've got to build those relationships, foster that trust, and you do settle into that rhythm um, once you've had that settling in period. So easy, just like that, <laughs> eh? <hey? laughs> yeah, just like that. I suppose, and lastly, on that, it does sound like a lot. Take advice. Again, it comes back to surrounding yourself with good people. Um, and there's lots of people that can help through that process. Mm. Well, you covered off a lot there. Um, <laughs> I'm sure people have questions as we go along. So if you do have a question, don't be a stranger, put it in that chat box there. Um, at the end, we're gonna have a Q&A session. So just type away and then we'll, we'll do our best to cover the topics off you put in there at the end of the, end of the webinar there. Mm. So you've, um, let's say you've gone through, um, many farms have gone past you or EP opportunities, but the one that was for you didn't go by, as your mum would tell you. Um, <laughs> you've used your farm focus, at, uh, farm focus advantage to crunch the numbers. She's all tickety-boo, you're proceeding. So from there, how have you used Farm IQ on your farm for your ongoing EP relationships? Yeah, so we love our farm IQ. It's been um, really valuable in our farming businesses. Um, it's really simple to keep the stock reconciliation current and accurate with what's happening on farm. And I find that really easy to keep it tidy with what I've got in farm focus. So that connection between me and the office and, and those out on farm that are updating um, to, to keep that nice and tidy together. Um, we've got all that stock sales and purchase information stored and we can report on that. The accurate milk production information. Um, coming back to the stock, we've got all our stock set in mobs and we can manage the grazing on there, which is great for those on farm to keep track um, and assign tasks and, and manage those rotations. Um, so Farm IQ gives us really good reports on the physical farm performance. So we're not just looking at the finances. I absolutely love the farm map. And um, we use it to plan our fencing projects, riparian planting projects. We map out our fertilizer applications, cropping, um, all those kinds of things. And we also, um, I've been using it lots recently um, as we've been going through an audit, we can have all our features marked on the farm map there. Um, I'm saying it's invaluable when it comes to audit time. Mm -hmm. And we'll also come again with um, audits in mind, having all those animal health records, fertilizer, chemicals used, everything in one place. Um, it's so easy to sit down at the kitchen table and run through, through the audits. And lastly, the health and safety tools are great. The Farm IQ takes care of everything we need um, in terms of health and safety, and it's really, really easy to use. Anything else you want to add there about Farm IQ tying into your farming business, Russell? Um, yeah. Well, for me, because of my day job for Farm IQ, I'm not on the farm every day. Um, I can be away from the farm for quite an extended period of time. So for me, knowing what's happening on farm while well, not physically being there, I get a lot of value out of that. And I imagine that would be the same for a, um, a, a live off the farm investor in a, in a property as well. So I know what's happening on farm without being there and I can still assign tasks to staff or to the old man or whatever, which he absolutely despises me doing. <laughs> um, so that would be the number one. And number two for me is uh, making farm management decisions uh, with just having more information in front of me, uh, especially with a sheep and beef farmer, we, we only get kill sheeps and, and scanning percentages and tailing numbers. But with Farm IQ, I got a, I got a bit more information uh, to make my decisions on. Um, yeah. Because dairy farmers, they've got milk in a vat. I, I don't have that luxury to record on. 
Um, so yeah, those would be the two things that I'd benefit from for sure. Um, now we better shift our focus to farm focus. Um, obviously use farm focus very uh, much close to the start of the journey of an EP. So how have you used farm focus in your equity partnerships? So um, we were with Cash Manager forever, and then of course have moved on to Farm Focus. So this um, long history of being good performers of budgeting, revising and delivering, that gave the bank real confidence in us to get started and, and get um, that next step in, in our journey. So that long history of performance. The, the planning tools, the budgeting and revising is invaluable. We use it all the time and the decisions we make um, are, are done empowered with information. So we know where we're at and what's coming. We use the reports um, all the time. We print them out and they sit on the coffee table and we go through them on the computer. We use them to look back, to look forward, and we use them to set goals and track progress. Um, so particularly have to mention the EFS report. We use it all the time. It reports on true farm performance, and that's the report we use to set those goals to manage those KPIs in our farming business. We use the reports in Farm Focus to communicate with our partners. The record keeping is clear, accurate, every sense accounted for. Um, our paperwork is always kept tidy and available for the accountant. It keeps the bank manager in the loop and gives them confidence in us. And also it puts us in a position that we're always ready for opportunities, whether it's a new deal, um, paying off debts, fitting in an extra trade or two, whatever it may be, we're, we're ready and can keep that up to date. Anything to add here, Russell? Uh, on the farm focus side, for me, it was probably the basics. The, um, the farmers love service and farm focus has great service. Um, the phone, every time I call the phone line, it's always available. I talk to a Kiwi, which is awesome. Um, and the training was great. Yeah, the train. In fact, the training was so good that even my old man said it was good, and he's this close from a carrier pigeon, okay. um, which is also um, another good thing. It's it's pretty simple to use. Yeah, yeah, um, which farmers just absolutely love. Okay, so moving on, uh, what do you reckon it takes to create a successful partnership? So you've you've got all those building blocks. What do you need? To um, carrying on for that partnership to, to progress? So based on our experience, and, and this is just my thoughts, whether it's wrong or right, um, for us, it's all about the people. And that's the bit we yeah. enjoy the most. You've got to have a level of trust in each other. And that comes back to choosing who you go into business with and delivering. So yeah, the people would be number one. Um, I think the the business structure that we use, the way we put it together, works really well for us. Um, mm -hmm. So with that, we have an equity manager who's got some skin in the game. And then my husband and I, we are in a overseeing and administration role. Mm -hmm. So with us in that overseeing and administration role, it gives the all the other partners a point of contact for any queries. It's where the kind of communication channel comes through us. And I think this gives the manager almost a bit of a buffer that allows them to get on with the farming and, and we take care of, of any queries and, and a bit more of the communication. Um, my husband and I are quite different, but we're quite a good team, I think. Well, most days we are anyway. He's got a lot of farming experience and takes care of the big picture stuff and makes sure the practical farming side's humming along. And I take care of the, the detail and the administration. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got the equity manager who's key, we've got us in that overseeing and administration role, and then we regularly communicate with the partners. So everyone's in the loop. Our door's yeah. always open for queries or to have a chat about what's going on. Just on the communication there, you're, you're saying that you're quite different to your husband, um, which a lot of farming couples are. Yeah. And an EP, you, you could have even more, you could have five brilliant minds at the table but have completely different opinions. How do you go about that? What happens when you have a robust discussion about something, shall we say? Yeah, absolutely. You're always gonna have, have lots of different personalities. And I think 
that probably just comes back to that really open and honest communication. You're in contact regularly. And so if any issues do come up or there's any robust conversations to be had, you have them early and you have them in that really clear, honest, transparent um, way. And, and also, I think with those robust conversations, it's probably about managing expectations. And so that leads me on nicely to talking about budgeting, planning in our businesses. I think it's really important that the budgets are realistic. So there's there's no surprises. We generally start the year with a really conservative budget and then revise it regularly as we go. We do this with the manager. It's their budget. They're the ones that's got to implement it um, and, and make it happen with our support. Um, so having that robust plan allows the manager to really just get on with the farming. And um, we share this with all the other partners and it puts us in that strong position to make good decisions. And it's clear and transparent about where we're headed. I think, again, on, on the budgeting and the planning, <clears throat> it's really easy to have a, a happy partnership when farming's going really well and everything's tracking along great everyone's happy then but in these more challenging times when when things are a bit trickier and um, I think when we make sure that the plan we've got in place is realistic then you really are managing those expectations and there's no surprises I think that's really important mm -hmm. so I've mentioned a couple times the the communication side it's vitally important regular clear transparent open honest communication Next on the list there, I've got learn what spins each other's wheels and grinds each other's gears. So we ask our partners, um, you know, what, what spins their wheels and grinds their gears. But we also just keep a little eye on what sparks joy in people when we see them. Um, is it a dividend? Is it seeing the fencing improving on the farm? Do they have a real focus on environmental projects, a passion about sheep genetics? Um, if they aren't from a farm, would buying a wood splitter for the partnership and just having some rings available to split before winter be a really cool thing for them? Or would everyone really goof off to having a, a hunting hut at the back of the farm? What What's going to spark that joy in people? And, and what grinds their gears? If you go around the farm and there's gates that don't swing, can you see everyone thinking, oh, um, or do they just maybe hate gorse with a passion? Whatever it may be, you can find what ticks the boxes and build that into your business plan. Next on the list there, I've got build a strong wider team. So our wider team out with the partnership are really, really important. We've got really strong relationships with the bank and accountant, and we really value their input into our business. Um, we make sure that we work with suppliers, stock agents, and other businesses that we respect, we enjoy working with, um, and that do a really good job for us. On that, I think it's also equally important um, that we work hard to make sure that we're a business that other parties want to work with and enjoy being involved with. So you have yeah. that, you're all on that journey together, I guess, and 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 having some fun along the way. So it's really, um, we think it's really important to keep that fun aspect. I think we're professional and, and driven and, um, and we work hard, but we do try and get that culture right and have some fun as we go. Absolutely. That's what it's all about at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah. Speaking of the end of the day, we're nearly at the end of our webinar here. So if I was just to summarise a couple of things about uh, what Annie's gone through here, these are the basics I took home. Uh, good people, communication and planning. Um, good people seems to be a reoccurring theme throughout this whole thing. It's a very huge, there's a lot of humanity involved in equity partnerships and, and the personalities is, and teamwork seems to be very important, uh, which ties into get connected. You have to be known out there. I've seen a couple of questions in there. How do you, like, how do you get involved in some of the stuff if you don't have a bank manager and account and so forth? You, you got to get connected. You got to go to those local events. You have to put your name out there so the bank managers know who you are, et cetera, et cetera. So you're at the front of their mind. And we've got here, remember it's a journey. Um, Annie touched on that there will be many deals that don't go through, that just aren't possible. It's not the case of you put a proposal in, it's accepted, and you're on your on a farm with your very first crack. It's it's a journey. There will probably be low mo moments and there'll be some very good high moments as well. 
Uh, and we've cheekily got at the bottom there, sign up for Farm Focus and Farm IQ. Uh, what I really mean there is use the right tools, um, both physically on farm and in for software as well. And if Farm Focus and Farm IQ is a good fit for you, we've got a couple of promo codes running at the moment, so you can give them a crack. So you can have three months for free on Farm Focus with the uh, Webinar 23 coupon. Uh, and you can also contact your sales team for uh, the Farm Focus Advantage Pack, which is what Annie touched on earlier. A, a very low risk um, start to your farming software journey there. And then on the Farm IQ side as well, we've got a promo code, uh, Webinar23. So they'll get you two months for free uh, on Farm IQ, um, as well as a free map draw if you don't have a digital map already. And we'll hold your hand with free onboarding through the whole process as well. Okay, we've got a, a few minutes left here, so we'll um, let's go through some of these questions, shall we, Annie? Uh, so yeah. I'll start with one here. Frankie, it's to do with the lease opportunities. How do you find them? Um, and could you please explain more around different ways partnerships can be structured? I'll touch on the lease one if you like first, Annie, then you can um, dive in on the EP side. Leases can be hard to find. They, they're um, more often than not, not advertised. Um, I know from my experience as a bank manager, quite often it was just knowing the right person. Um, I can think of one clear example where I had a young farm and couple said, we're looking for our first small farm to get onto. And then about a month later, a client of mine had a bad accident and broke his neck. Um, and he said, I'm leasing up my farm immediately. And I knew someone straight away because these people come into the bank and said, we're looking for a farm to lease. So that's just an example. You gotta, you gotta be in the know, you gotta, you gotta let it be known that you're looking for a lease farm with your real professionals. Have yeah, a few EP Yeah, I think that just reiterates that um, get connected and, and grow your network. A lot of these things are, are wide, word of mouth and just, positioning yourself with that good reputation um, and mm. putting the word out there. And um, the other part of that question, Russell, was it how different partnerships can be structured? Mm. Mm. I think that's quite a tricky one to answer. There's lots of um, options there, whether it's a company or a partnership. As I mentioned, um, we've had lots of different scenarios. You might have um, a trust that owns the farm or a company that owns the farm and a separate company that owns the stock and plant and a lease arrangement. Mm -hmm. um, there are different levels of shareholding, different percentages, and as um, you've used the term before, there's so many different ways to skin a cat. Um, and yeah, I think it depends on on each individual situation and and what equity people have got and what what people different people are bringing to the table. Mm. I've got another question here. Uh, what is the best maximum or minimum number of shareholders to have in an EP? Yeah, again, I don't think there's a, a right or wrong answer there. Um, with our home farm, there, there's two separate entities. Um, we've had up to um, seven, which is lots. And, and mm. that's there's different um, pros and cons. There's different, um, yeah, as I mentioned, we love the people aspect. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer there. I suppose it comes back to how much equity do you need to get the farming business off the ground? Um, mm. I think with many shareholders, it comes back to that robust shareholder agreement. So everyone knows where they're at, what their responsibilities are and what to expect. Mm -hmm. So I'm being a bit vague on these answers. It's <laughs> hopefully yeah, I've got another one here. Um, I see a question there. Can you share an example of a budget you have used for an EP proposition? I think I think for Annie, there, there's a bit of privacy stuff there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't sure think we have, to have time now to go into too much details for a for a budget. Um, in terms of building that initial plan, there's lots of places you can go to get information on what would be mm. realistic to put in there. There's different tools you can use to ensure it's realistic. Um, and in terms of putting it together, you mentioned it before um, with Farm IQ, and the same goes for Farm Focus. The information on our help centre but also the support team that we've got here in the office in Masterton are are more than willing to help and, and have a really good understanding of how to pull all that information together and how to report on it to get the right information at the other end. 
And um, so without getting into the, the nitty gritty numbers, um, yeah, there's lots of lots of valuable tools out there to, to build those initial plans. It's tricky mm -hmm. when you don't own the property and it's all new. Um, so we take lots of advice to say we surround ourselves with lots of other people um, and we, we pick their brains often as well. Awesome. And we've gone slightly over time here, folks. So I've got one last question here. Uh, lastly, building equity usually requires good cash flow, which is not the current situation for many farms at the moment. Yep. Truth. Absolute truth. Uh, what can we do to keep a positive mindset at these tougher times? What do you reckon, Annie? Yeah, I, it's a, a very, very good point and very valid. It's important that we do acknowledge how hard it is out there just now um, with different weather events and, um, and interest rates, increasing costs, the schedule's falling. It, it's actually, it's really hard out there just now. Everyone's doing it pretty tough, I think. Um, so I suppose remembering that we're all in it together, everyone's in, in the same boat. Um, recently in the wider app I hear there's been quite a lot on so it's important to get out and about rural support trust have put on some great days beef and lamb dairy nz and um, the local discussion group they actually just had an afternoon at the pub the other day for a get together and um, so there's lots of ways to get out and about um, what's on in the rural community again that helps build those networks but the local rugby club play group local pub um, getting out and about in your community um, my husband would say having a healthy work-life balance, if there's ever a chance to go fishing, that's important that you, you do that to um, get that work-life balance. Um, control what you can control. I think Farm IQ and Farm Focus both um, provides tools to know, um, to make those informed decisions. So control what you can, and that really helps with the peace of mind. We talk lots about budgeting and looking forward, planning ahead, but I think it's good um, when things are hard to take a moment to reflect back, look back on where you've come from and reflect mm -hmm. on that. Um, and again, I've mentioned it a few times, but surround yourself with positive people. We'll say we do acknowledge that it's it's tough out there. So, so having that network around you um, is important. Anything else to add, Russell, that could, could be helpful? <sighs> yeah, I think the only thing I'll, I'll put in there is that um, it's not just farmers; it's rural professionals. In fact, the whole rural, um, the whole rural community is actually doing it a bit tough at the moment as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't just, say, yeah, rural professionals, be it uh, your bankers, your accountants, um, even your your machinery salesmen, um, yeah. any business in a rural community, we're all in the same boat. Um, there's no hiding from the fact that expenses are going up and incomes gone down, but we're ridden out worse waves and. Um, we put our thinking caps on we'll ride this one out too yeah that would be no. my lessons. yeah and on that positive note should we should we wrap it up there yeah that's so, been brilliant thanks so much um for everyone's time i hope there's been some value in that and and people have, have taken a few things away from that and um, say i'm sure we run through it but if there's anything farm focus can do to to help your farming business that supports there as with farm iq and um, so yeah thank you very much for your time Thank you very much, folks. Have a